Now, now I believe we should welcome Henry Drummond. Welcome him. If the enemy sends its Goliath into battle, it magnifies our call. Henry Drummond. Henry Drummond has stalked the courtrooms of this land for 40 years. When he fights, headlines follow. The whole world will be watching our victory over Henry Drummond. If St. George had slain a dragonfly, who would remember? <laughs> He's a wonderful old war horse, theatrically to begin with, and it still resonates right now, politically and religiously. The questions are still the same. And as long as there is a dialogue between the fundamentalists and the, and the creationists and, uh, and the protagonists of intelligent design and, and, and the atheists, there's, there will always be that dialogue. It's a human dialogue. Colonel Drummond. Your Honor, I wish to call to the stand Dr. Amos D. Keller, head of the zoology department at the University of Chicago. Objection. On what grounds? I wish to inquire what possible relevance the testimony of a zoology professor can have in this trial. Well, it has every relevance. My client is on trial for teaching evolution. Any testimony relating to his alleged infringement of the law must be admissible. Irrelevant, immaterial, inadmissible. Well, I know it because we studied it in high school and it seemed very quaint and boring and I don't know that I paid very much attention to that class and for it to be revitalized in this form and Doug's work in it has been Phenomenal, it's been great. Mercifully, I've never seen it on stage before. I certainly knew the picture, and I've certainly read it, uh, as many people do in school. And uh, we had the great assistance of uh, the Lawrence and Lee estate, and we reorganized some of the text. We have a different first act curtain than has ever been seen uh, on stage. And uh, they uh, permitted uh, certain cuts and certain conflations of roles and things that I think helped uh, focus the play. Uh, what I like about the script is the argument. Uh, the director at one point said it's about the vigor of argument. And it, and it really is. The argument between the two of them in the second act is really wonderful to listen to. And you can't you can't drift it keeps pulling you back in and whatever side you're on you you don't want to walk away from it Afrazad begat Salah and Salah begat Eber and Eber uh, 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 so on and so on and so on and these pretty important folks they are the generations of the holy men and women of the Bible how did they go about all this uh, begatting <coughs> what do you mean well I mean did uh, people begat in those days about the same way they get themselves begat today? The process is about the same. I don't think your scientists have improved it any. <laughs> I play lots of parts, and I, I love this guy. I mean, Brian was a, William Jennings Bryan was a very interesting man, a very, had a very powerful effect on American, modern American politics. None of that really is captured in the play, but even in the play, the character's an interesting. He's a 19th century figure. And the writers, being the Darwinians they were, uh, essentially uh, have the dinosaur Brady dragged off the stage at the end so the 20th century can emerge. Brian Dennehy is a wonderful guy. I got the chance to work with him in 1990 doing an uh, uh, Iceman Comet in Chicago. And uh, he's personable, he's genial, he's generous, he's a really great actor. Um, um, and watching him bring his particular passion to the role is great. Uh, Chris Plummer is, you know, he's a legend and he's one of those people who is a link to the other legends of the stage. You know, people uh, who have now passed beyond us. Sarah Bernhardt, Eva Legallian, uh, the Luntz, uh, great, great, great actress and he's of that ilk. Brian kept saying, oh, I'm too cynical to play Matthew Harrison Brady, but I think he's a beautiful believer, a beautiful idealist. And I think um, uh, Chris is uh, just glorious as, uh, as Drummond. Drummond, the court must be satisfied that this line of questioning has some bearing on the case. You ruled out all my witnesses. I must be allowed to examine the one witness that you've left me in my own way. Your Honor, I am willing to sit here and endure Mr. Drummond's sneering and his disrespect, for he's pleading the case of the prosecution by his contempt for all that is holy. I object, I object, I object! On what grounds is it possible that something is holy to the celebrated agnostic? Yes! The individual human mind. <laughs>
it's remarkable to see the Lyceum packed with people up to the rafters. It's really the most, it's an amazing thing to get to see night after night. And they've just been so generous and, uh, you know, I think a lot of people who come see the play don't know the outcome. So I won't say it, but there are gasps, you know, when you think that there might not be when, when a certain thing is revealed at the end. So um, I hope they keep coming because they've just been great so far. They've been incredibly uh, moved, attentive. Um, I, think the, uh, I think they have a good time, which is a surprise to them. They expect to be lectured at or taught, and they're not. They're entertained. And I'll tell you, the audiences love it. They just eat it up. So nothing wrong with that. You want to have a good evening in the theater. This is, and see a couple of actors really belting away at each other. This is, uh, this is as good a way to do it.